Claudia Perez. Welcome to Nature of Reality Radio. I heard about you on Facebook. I have been getting a lot of Facebook friend requests, suggested friend requests in the more recent times from, uh, I don't know who's exactly sending them. Is it Facebook algorithms or is it people that are friends of these people who think that I could friend these people and be a guest on my show? Well, it's a good thing because a lot of these people that I'm seeing that I'm getting friend requests on Facebook certainly have a lot of things worthy to uh, be glorified and have themselves glorified on my radio show and be worthy guests and even though I've certainly moved on from the days of blog, the early days of my show on Block Talk Radio, where I would uh, make sure I never had the same guest on twice. Uh, no, I let guests on more than once, especially if they ask me to, but uh, still try to make a habit of getting different guests on as much as possible. And it's great that I'm getting more and more of these requests to have people come on my show and, uh, well, I, to frame my Facebook, I should say, and I get to have them as guests on my show. So, that's how I heard about you. So uh, you are a QHHT practitioner. You've got your own site. You study the work of Dolores Cannon and fascinating individual she was. She probably left us a little too early all because of a, some sort of an accident it was. And, but she had a lot to offer mm-hmm. and they still upload um, videos uh, of her work to YouTube in the present day. Um, Ozark Mountain Publishing YouTube channel has uh, keeps uploading things, and every so often I watch one of those uh, presentations. Um, but before I give uh, a, just a couple of disclaimers for my listeners, uh, folks, after the uh, uh, 35 to 40 minutes of the show, you'll have to pay me to uh, listen to these shows. It's time for me to start monetizing. I've been saying that for a little while, and uh, not really thrilled with the amount of. I'm mean, getting so far. Come on, guys. I have a lot of information to offer. It's certainly worth your while to pay just a little more to, to listen to me. I know we're all um, strapped with uh, money issues and all, but wouldn't hurt. And uh, well, uh, also, if you, even if you don't get to pay me to listen to my shows, the long versions, if you just want to listen to the short versions, uh, please do listen to them on cost.tv and not YouTube. Listen on YouTube for 15 seconds to give me a view credit and then listen on the cost.tv because cost.tv is a blockchain monetization YouTube channel. The more people that listen, the more money I can make through blockchain monetization. And I'll provide the link for that in the video descriptions on YouTube. And hopefully I'll never get kicked off YouTube and hopefully they'll let me monetize with ads on YouTube too. I have reapplied for that. I don't know how long it's going to take them, but hope that comes around. So I've babbled long enough. Claudia Perez, it's now your chance to explain who you are and what you've experienced that causes you to be the person that you are and do the stuff that you do. And then we'll get after that into some more nitty gritty science and metaphysics um, regarding QHHT and the uh, other things that encompasses. So Claudia Perez, who are you? You got the floor. I don't have Alex Jones-itis. I don't interrupt my guests. So I will shut up and put myself on mute and let you speak. (laughs) Thank you so much. That was a lovely introduction. Well, my name is Claudia Perez, and as you said, I practice quantum healing hypnosis technique, as the late Dolores Cannon did, and um, unfortunately, she left this a while ago, so I wasn't able to study right under her, but I did study under her daughter, Julia Cannon, which um, she has taken over for her mom since she has passed, and she does a great job with everything. Um, right now they are offering the courses online to make it more available to the public, especially with everything that's going on. So for anyone that's interested, you can check that out on the main website, whether it's qhhtofficial.com or doloriscannon.com. They both have that available for you. Um, they're doing the level one and level two on there. So that was really nice. That's actually how I got my certification. Um, when this whole pandemic hit, I think, it really changed things for me. It really gave me a time to just look inside myself and really think of what it was that I wanted to do with my life. And overall, I think that that's what COVID is right now. It's giving everybody that time of isolation that we've been needing to look at the problems that we've been pushing away. And that's what QHHT does for you. It gives you a chance to talk with somebody and look at your life overall. And there's just something about being able to talk with somebody without judgment and that's just willing and open to listen to your life story without any judgment and just there to comfort you with love and 
nothing but positive suggestions as to why certain things may have had to happen to you. And once you change the way that you look at life, it really does change everything for you. Um, with me in particular, I was at a point in my life where I was just constantly being depressed, constant depression. And it's that type of depression where you don't want to leave your home. You don't want to talk to people. You're just in this very dark space that you don't even know how to explain to people what it is that you need. There's this void that just seems to be endless. And what I've come to find with QHHT and having clients now myself is that everybody, everybody feels the exact same way as I did back then. And the reason we feel that way is because as Dolores Cannon explains, we are brought into this reality to experience all of these emotions and with the, the veil of being separate from everything and everyone. And it's so daunting, you know, like when you're sitting at home, you're tired of watching TV, you're tired of looking at your phone, you can't leave your house, and you're just there thinking of everything bad that's ever happened in your life. It gets to you, especially right now. But also, you don't have to look at depression as something negative, as something bad, as I've learned recently. And the reason I say that is because depression can be the step right before you say, you know what, enough is enough. I've tried living my life for this long. It hasn't worked out. It's time to change. And another thing I've learned with QHHT is that there's two parts of our life. There's the part where our childhood, we live with our parents and things just happen to us. We all have it. It happens to every one of us. But we all feel so alone in in this process because things are just constantly happening to us. We're not being asked, we're being told. And then we get to adulthood and then we're expected to use that, use that same information, turn it around and use it for us to keep growing when in reality there was like so much negativity back there from everyone, whether your parents were alcoholics, they were using drugs, they were so into their religion that they they forgot to make time for you. They forgot to actually value the things that are here and now. You know, there's there's so many things with mental health that this can help. This can help people in so many different ways pertaining to mental health. And I feel like for me personally, after my session, I was able to stop drinking immediately without hesitancy. I didn't have withdrawals or anything like that. And I had been drinking since I was 13 years old. I was 13 up until I was 31. And then I said, you know what? This isn't working out. Enough is enough. It's time to turn things around. And once I started changing my mindset of being of being the victim and taking the role of being the victor in my own life, it really changed everything. My perspective in life, how I saw people. I no longer judge people how I used to because now I see that it's only a reflection of myself and things that I still need to work on. I feel that it's made me much, much more kind and tolerant. And it's made me appreciate life in a way I never thought possible. Every day when I wake up now, I see my children and I have this joy, this happiness of just seeing them be, of getting to be a part of their little lives. And it's not until you start to get to a better point in your life that you start to value these experiences because as parents, I think a lot of the time we get so involved in life, so overtaken by the past and traumas and problems that sometimes we want to avoid being present with our children because it's a constant reminder of the things that you're doing wrong or how you're not enough or things that you're lacking. It happens to everybody. It happens to all of us. 
But there's just something very powerful about talking to somebody who understands that and lets you know that you're not alone. And that's just the interview portion of it. After the interview portion, what happens is um, during the QHHT session, you'll go into a meditation. At least that's what I like to do for my clients to help them kind of relax and a kind of um, it helps them get to a better state to where they can be willing to accept whatever's coming next and release whatever they're ready to release. After that, we jump into the hypnosis part. And um, the hypnosis is very powerful. It's very powerful in healing because that's at the time when people are the most vulnerable and the most honest with themselves, and they're willing to change things. This is the moment where things really happen. And I've heard of just some really incredible experiences of people having miraculous healing and things that can't be explained by science. And it's just, you know, it's the power of your thought. It's the power of changing how you think and your faith. Your faith is really what heals you. I like to always give credit to, to Jesus from when he was here because this is actually, in a way, I like to believe that it's similar to what he was doing. He was going around teaching people how to heal themselves teaching people how to connect with themselves, teaching people how they're not alone and how we are all in this together. We may we may feel like we're in different paths, but at the end of the day, we're all still on planet Earth. We're going through the same things. And um, even though we're going through the same things, we have this illusion that we're separate from each other and that nobody else understands and that my pain is only my pain. And... It's just, it's been a very incredible journey. You know, I've been doing this for about two years now, and I, I can't even explain some of the miracles I've seen. I can't explain to you some of the crazy bump in the night type things that happen now in my house on a regular basis, which I welcome openly now, now that I understand. Um, but it's, it's been quite a journey, and I'm really excited to see what else is coming. The more people I get to know, the more people I get to meet, the more humbled I am to to get to to get the opportunity to do this and to help people the way that somebody once helped me. <clears throat> very, very enlightening and um, inspiring, and a great story and. Uh, well, anybody who does QHHT has, certainly has a lot to offer the world, and uh, Dolores Cannon certainly did have a lot to to offer the world. Um, now, uh, it seems that, um, well, some people would beg to differ with how Dolores Cannon's um, information was, um, whether the way she obtained it was the proper way to obtain it. I like picking on George Kavasilis because he, uh, he always says, uh, don't bother using the chakras, just go with the heart. Uh, he always um, he also suggests that uh, people who try to channel other entities are uh, also um, not really going with the heart. They're relying on other forces to, to get answers. And uh, that's not really the, the way to go. But um, since you've uh, looked at Dolores Cannon's work, uh, do you have anything to say about the um, the way that she would uh, go about um, contacting entities in higher states of consciousness? And um, do you, I guess, for lack of a better question, agree or disagree with George Kavasilis' assertion that um, talking with entities like that to get information is not the best way to get information? Because looking within the heart is probably the the best your own heart, which connects with you with everything else, is the best way to well, get information. <laughs> I I could see why he would say that, but also like for example, if you look at religion, the reason that we have religion is because it explains one concept in very many different ways. All rivers lead to the ocean. You have to have different concepts for different people because the message isn't always going to, um, it's not always going to reach people the same way. That's why there's all these different modalities at this time. And 
I think that the more open people are to it, I think that the more healing there is involved. Um, the fact that he says that we're contacting other entities and such things, that's not it at all. I want to I wanna clarify that what we're actually doing is we're just helping people remember their past. That's all we're doing. We're bringing up past things that um, linger that sometimes are brought into this life. For example, I had one client. She, um, she had a car accident where she lost her leg. And when she lost her leg, she, she somehow knew she just needed to get rid of it, that it needed to be gone. However, she always wondered why she was so willing to just lose her leg without putting up a fight for it. When we did her regression, we found that at, an, at another life, she actually took somebody's leg at that same age. So what she was experiencing was a form of karma. She was just repaying her karma, and she had accepted it, and she knew that coming into this life at that age, she would be losing it. That's why she was just so willing to give it up. Now, when when we go to past lives and we make these connections, we only make the connections in order to release anything related to the life now. We don't necessarily go into depth as she did with certain subjects. And the only time that happens is when those subjects are willing to. These subjects are in connection with their higher self. Now, if, if everybody were to believe the same thing, which doesn't always happen, is the higher self is, in a sense, the collective, the source. It's going to be um, the source to all information that connects us all. So if you can connect to that, then yes, other things from other people and other, other lives are going to come up. It's only natural that it's going to happen. But um, I think that we should be more open to different things. It shouldn't just have to be black and white. That's where religion comes in. And we're not religion. This is something more spiritual. It's something to help people understand their life from a different perspective. It's not necessarily a black and white, yes and no. It's giving you a different look at life. Yes, and uh, as far as um, regarding religion, I mean, I uh, have my uh, questions about how long it would take religion to um, to van vanquish from this world, if it ever would vanquish entirely. I mean... Um, People are free to choose their own faith and all, but it doesn't change the fact that if you follow religion, your consciousness level decreases because you're following some higher power when you yourself are that higher power of infinite consciousness. And um, don't know how long after the Pluto and Capricorn cycle ends it's going to be before um, religion, people that are of a religious nature wake up and uh, realize they've been suckered mm -hmm. into, into something. But... Um, uh, actually, I wanted to switch gears and get back to the karma thing you mentioned uh, about the yeah. uh, lady. It was basically an eye for an eye, in this case, a leg for a leg, where she um, <clears throat> lost a leg because she caused someone else to lose their leg in a past life. Now, um, I don't know what, what an expert you are in regards to how karma, the science of how karma works, but um, one may uh, look at another extreme example you raped someone in a past life, you get raped in this life. So um, that's another form of karma. You got to feel like what you did to someone else. And um, so uh, that's also one eye for an eye in a sense. But how does the universe decide whether uh, the karma that you need to resolve will be eye for an eye or they just maybe do X amount of unpleasant things to you before the universe decides, okay, I've done X amount of unpleasant things to you to, that are, as far as I'm concerned, are just as traumatic as the one thing that you did to someone else, if you get what I'm trying to say here. How does the universe decide how your karma is being resolved? It will be an eye for an eye all at once, and if it's not, and it's just a series of unfortunate things, how does the universe decide how, how it should work that way? Well, it's not so much the universe, but one of the things that we learn in quantum healing hypnosis technique is that we make we make a list of lessons that we want to learn in each life. 
So, for example, in that life, the girl, when she took her life, when she crossed over before coming into this life, when she was making her plan to come into this life, she said, well, you know, it's only fair that because I took your leg that I understand what it felt like. So in this life, I agree to lose my leg so that I can understand better what you went through. Now, karma does not necessarily work that way every time. Um, things are going to be a little bit different just depending on what the people agree. The reason that we are here in this life at this time is because we have agreed to come into this life to experience emotions and contracts with different people. When I re when I talk about contracts, I mean you you make a contract with another person and you say between us two we're going to go through this turmoil, we're going to go through these uh, tribulations together and we are supposed to come out of the, out of it this way. If things don't work out, then we'll try it again backwards. This time you'll be the wife and I'll be the husband or vice versa, depending. So we don't necessarily have to see karma as a bad thing. It's just a way of us learning. After all, we come into this world, into this experience to learn, to understand, to have more compassion and sympathy towards one another. And the only way that we can really get to a level of understanding is if we ourselves experience it. You know, they say there is no big, no bigger judge out there than us ourselves. And that's actually who's going to judge us at the end of our lives. We're going to sit there and we're going to look at everything that we've done. And we know in our hearts when we've been wrong. And we know the things that we need to make right. And that's all it is. It's us attempting to make things right, to bring a balance to the world. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> now, some people may be getting kind of impatient with the way that um, karma plays out um, regarding, like, the system of domination and control, controlling humanity. You would think that if a system was trying to suppress humanity's consciousness and interfere with our free will to make us suffer then they would eventually have to succumb to the bad karma of what they did to us, the bad things they did to us, coming back to them. But I have heard more than once, and I've <laughs> bitched about it myself, I must admit, the bad guys don't really seem to be uh, getting karma coming back at them. But am I perhaps um, looking at this the wrong way? And um, if I am looking at it the wrong way, how do you make sense of it? Could it be that they, the karma that they are going to generate is eventually going to be so big that it has to hit them all at once in a in one sitting, which will be a shock to all of humanity? Or is it going to be more small and gradual to the point where like, we're going to keep feeling like we're slaves, but we'll feel like we're less slaves and less slaves and less enslaved, less enslaved as time goes on to, to the point where like we eventually um, are free and we're like, my God, couldn't we have just resolved this all in one sitting if, uh, if we just had eye for an eye karma and all these bad um, system domination control folks could have stopped hassling us, we wouldn't be suffering, suffering anymore. So I guess the question I'm asking is, are the well, they must be because it's the law of the universe but why does it I guess seem to some people seem that the consistent of domination and control is not suffering karma for the things that they're they're doing to humanity which you would expect would enable us to to become free of them as a their punishment or and our consequential reward if you will well I would say there's two things here. The first is that you have to keep in mind that there's over 7 billion people that have came into this world at this time, and everybody has their own little left of, list of lessons and how they expect things to go perfect. What happens when 7 billion people come into the same world at the same time? They all have free will, and they all are experiencing different realities. Things are going to clash. It's just going to happen. That's why bad things happen to good people. It's, it's 
it's just, it's going to happen. There's so many people and there's free will. We have to remember we have free will. And part of this illusion is making us think that we're, we're all being um, manipulated. We're all being told what to think. But this isn't necessarily true. Everything is from point of perspective. You are being brought into this world at this time to experience this world in the best light. Now, it's up to you. Are you going to turn on the news and watch about all the, war, all the wars and all the poverty and all of these things that you cannot control? They're not for you to control. You have no control over it. But the moment that you turn those things on, it's bringing your vibrations down and you're getting to a negative point of view. Now, all of a sudden, you're being sad and you're being depressed and you don't want to go out. And now you yourself, now you find yourself in traffic and you're honking at people and you're yelling at people down the street. Now you're upset because somebody's cutting you off. And it's just a big spiral. The, big, the biggest challenge here right now is that everybody has the choice. How will you be brainwashed? Are you going to turn on politics or are you going to meditate? Are you going to go out to nature or are you going to go out to the club? Are you going to spend time with your family or are you going to spend that time on Facebook? You know, it's all options. It's all perspective. You can hear, um, there's this one story that talks about two, two young men, two boys. They grow up with their father. Their father is an abusive alcoholic. One of the boys turns out to be an alcoholic and when he grows up and they ask him, why are you an alcoholic? He says, well, my father was an alcoholic. Oh, okay. I get it. Well, the other boy turns out to grow up to be a successful businessman. And when they ask him, why did you grow up to be a successful businessman? He says, well, because my dad was an alcoholic. Here's two men with the same life, but different perspectives. One of them chose to see that all of this negativity, that all of this that his dad was bringing onto himself wasn't helping him. It wasn't doing him any good. It wasn't, it wasn't getting him anywhere. He was sad. He was depressed. He wasn't going anywhere with his life. So he chose to instead take that information and turn it around and say, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go the complete opposite way because now I know what doesn't work. To where the other one used that as an excuse to say, well, that's the only thing I know. But this is the biggest challenge because right now people are at a point to where they have to decide, what do I do with the first part of my life where things were just happening to me? What do I do now? Everybody has a choice. Everybody is, has a God-given consciousness. And that's that little voice that you hear in your head telling you, this is right, this is wrong. That's what people call the little angel on my shoulder, the little devil on the other side telling me from right and wrong. That's your consciousness. That's what was left for us after Jesus left. That was his gift to us, for us to know between right and wrong. Now, the fact that people want to say, well, I didn't know, that's, that's something that's a personal problem. There's something else going on there, but that's a whole different issue that that they have to be willing to to admit and go into and um that's that's just um that's a whole nother ball game right there. Fair enough. Um it is a whole new ball game but <laughs> We're apparently uh, getting into a whole new ball game, and actually, before uh, we get into that ball game, just want to point out, I guess at this point, listeners, from this point onward in this interview, you will have to subscribe to my Patreon account to be able to listen to the rest of this interview. Now that I got that out of the way, 